ask the conductor because I am all aboard. So, so everybody get on board. <laughs> I need you to take this ride along with me, okay? We're gonna go some places. It's gonna be some up, some down, but just hang in there with me. Just take this ride. Madam Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, I'm glad that you're on this trip with me today. It'll be a good ride. And at the end of it, I trust that there'll be something for you to reflect on. So we are in Houston, Texas. My flight has just landed. My brother has picked me up from the hospital, from the airport, and he's taken me to the hospital to see my older sister, Charlene, who was admitted just a couple of days before. <clears throat> Excuse me. And we get to the hospital and I have an opportunity to go in and hang out with her for a bit. My brother comes and says, you know, are you ready to go out to Susie's house? No, I'm not, I'm good. I'm gonna uh, stay for a while. Johnny says, no, come on, take, let's go to Susie. She's expecting you. My sister starts looking a little sad and I think, nah, never mind. Let me just stay here with Charlene for overnight. That'll be good. Keep in mind, I have in tow with me my JBC speakers that will push out some music like nobody's business. So she's in the hospital. Of course, I am respectful of other people being around. But however low the music is, I wanted to make sure it would be crisp. Because one of the things that Charlene and I shared was a love of music and of smooth jazz. So for me to be able to bring some joy into that hospital room with her was a joy for me. Of course, keep in mind, you know, I do want you to know that just because I had music and I am aware it's a hospital, I wasn't there to blast it. It wasn't trying kind to of play it like it was a club. <laughs> I just really wanted to bring something that I knew would bring her joy. And it did. And we listened to music and we laughed and it was cool. And it was, I was so glad I spent the night with her. And my brother comes and picks me up in the afternoon the next day. So now we're all gonna go from this hospital room. So let's keep those spirits up there. It's not a sad story, I promise you. So we, you're gonna take the, you know, the ride out from the hospital with my brother to the younger sister, Susan, out to her house. So we're there, we get to hang out, we hang out by her pool, the kids come over, we have a great time. You know, I get to shower and change. I go back to the hospital to hang out with my sister, Charlene, some more. And I am, not self-proclaimed, but that they put to me, I am a joy bringer in my family. I understand the importance of happy moments, right? And so I have transcended many times throughout life, I transcend the space that I'm actually in because as an empath, I am clear that doing so brings so much joy to someone else and that that's what I'm in that moment for. So I'm back with Charlene and we hang out some more, but she seems a little different on Saturday. On Saturday, she's um, just a slightly agitated a little bit. I guess that's what, how I would label it. And we still laugh and talk some, but not quite as much. And I had to be okay with that because she is in the hospital and she is under treatment. So we did the best we could to make sure that, because I say we, because my brother stayed with me that afternoon for a little bit. Fast forward. So now here we all are together, all in the hospital room with her. And it's my opportunity to just chat with her son. Johnny's gone down to the cafeteria. We're laughing, we're talking, we're all here together. And during this maybe 30 minutes, there was a slight shift in, it seemed like she was starting to get a little bit more agitated. And I asked her, you know, what was going on? She was lucid, but she didn't really want to share with me whatever was going on. So she didn't articulate. But when I know you, I know you. And I knew her. And I knew there was something else going on. But she was still clear in mind, but physically she couldn't do everything that she would have been able to do before. We go forward. And now it's Saturday evening and I'm seeing the agitation has progressed. I stay overnight. Sunday afternoon, she is doing what I have coined the phrase of fighting the sheets. I mean, she became really, really restless. And where this phrase came from was I realized in my heart, in my soul, what was happening was her mind was still clear. 
she was still fully active in her mind and fully engaged. However, it was the thoughts and the memories of the things she had not done that she meant at that point could no longer do that had her in a serious fight with those sheets. Her regrets, her unperceived dreams, the unspoken words, all of those things were fighting her and she was fighting back with those sheets. And so I am here today to ask each of you to do everything you can to ensure that you don't get caught fighting the sheets. Do the things that you are here to do, enjoy the moments, say the words, accept the apology, extend the apology, accept the forgiveness, extend the forgiveness. But whatever you do, make sure that you spend some time extending yourself so that should you ever have that moment, you don't get caught fighting the streets. Thank you, Madam Chair Thank you.